Let's talk some sports, baby. Take a bye, Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by Jones. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we're going to do. We're going to holler at you until next time, baby. Well, the uh, Celtics 76ers and Mavs Clippers weren't the only games in town over the last day or so. The Denver Nuggets won another overtime thriller over the Jazz, 135 to 125, despite a 57 point eruption from Donovan Mitchell. The Raptors dumpstered a scrappy Nets team by 24, and the Magic also caught the Bucks sleeping, taking game one 122 to 110. So, Jay, let's go ahead and start with you, man. Of all these games, which results stood out to you the most? Um, well, you know, uh, Donovan Mitchell, 57 points. That was, that was nice. Um, wasn't enough as I suspected it, w- it wouldn't be, um, you know, Denver's going to win that series. Jokic is going to do whatever he wants to go bear as he did again. Um, Jamal Murray, that was a great game. It's good to see him having a nice performance. He was my breakout player to start the year. Um, little late, little late for the breakout, but you know, we'll take better late than never as, as we like to say. Um, Raptors nets. It's pretty easy. I mean, you know, Toronto's going to do what they do. Van Fleet gives you 30 and 11. That's very nice. Um, I, will, I will tell you this. I'm paying very close attention to Kyle Lowry and his shooting numbers. I'm paying attention to him. I expect him to fully go back to the Kyle Lowry pre-Kawhi Leonard. Remember the days of Lowry and DeRozan where they were, you know, perennial playoff no-shows? Three for 14, three for 10 from three. I also got to say this. If the NBA kept the statistic for falling down, Lowry would lap the field and falling down. No matter what, whatever play it is, if Lowry is in the air and he feels anything, he is falling down to get a foul. And I just – got oh, that right. It gets on my last nerve. It's so irritating. But anyway, that's enough about them games. Let's get to the real thing here. Um, Hold on. Before you get to the real thing, before you get to the real thing. So let me get this right. We call Kyle Lowry a bar of soap, and you talking about him falling down a lot? Have you tried to hold a wet bar of soap? It get a little rough. That's why they had the term in jail. Don't drop the soap. I, I was thinking about a joke just now like that. I, I refrained, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said it better, though, so that, that's – I like that. Good stuff. Anyway. Well, in, that, in that case, I guess really he is – he really is the bar of soap. <laughs> That'd be good. I could – you know what? Yeah. We could all make – we could probably all make all-star team if we just went in and fell down over and over. That'd be really cool. <laughs> anyway, speaking of falling down flat on their face, how about those Milwaukee Bucks? Yeah, they're, they're pretty uh. good. Not. Um, listen, I will say Orlando uh, – Orlando pulled this thing last year against those same Toronto Raptors, if you remember. They won game one of that series last season in the first round. And people were, you know, they were up in arms about, oh, could the Raptors be in trouble? Well, no, they weren't because they won the next four games. You know, the magic, the magic of fraudulent. The magic of like 33 and 40. They didn't all of a sudden get good. I'm not buying this. They, but I will tell you this about the Bucs. Listen, all of these people are professionals. So when Milwaukee comes in here and they think they're still playing seeding games and they don't come in with the right level of focus, intensity, and attention to detail, these type of things can happen. And you can have one of these games where you just get blitzed by an inferior team who doesn't even have Aaron Gordon who don't have Jonathan Isaac, and Evan Fournier didn't decide to hit a shot until the fourth quarter, and you still get, you still get just blitzed. It's, some, it, it's something we got to pay attention to. I fully, I fully consider this an absolute anomaly, um, and I absolutely expect Milwaukee to come out focused in game two, and I expect this series to be over in five games. I absolutely believe that. But I will tell you, I will be, I will be um, it will be a four-alarm fire if they lose game two, and I will be in full panic mode. I won't jump, I won't jump ship, but I'll be in a panic mode more than I am right now because you, can't, you cannot be that awful at everything. Let me tell you, that's about as good as Orlando can play. Nikola Vucevic, 35 points, hitting all the threes in the world. How many did he have? Five or eight from three, 15 of 24. I don't know what Brook Lopez was doing. I think Brook Lopez has had a really good season. Um, defensively, he's been excellent. We know how his game has developed as the game has changed. So he has changed with the game, hitting a lot of threes for you this year. But, yeah, he comes out with five points, two for nine, and obviously wasn't playing all that great a defense if Vucevic is putting up 35. Um, so that was a, it was a disgraceful performance by him. I think, I think many a time he can be your third best player if you're Milwaukee. 
And then speaking of your other complimentary pieces, we'll get back, we'll get to Giannis in a minute. Uh, Middleton, Middleton, I know out of all the duos that we talk about in the NBA, I mean, you're the, you're the bottom tier duo, dude. We know this, even though they let you in the all-star game, 50, 40, 90, you was close. But you got to show up. It's playoff time. We can't have these four of twelve dud performances. I mean, I, I, you know what? I'd love to criticize Eric Bledsoe right now, but I can't because he gave you fifteen points on five for eleven. That's actually exceeding what I expect from him. The only problem I have with Eric Bledsoe, you know, the worst thing that happened to Bledsoe in this game, he came out there and hit a three to start the game, and then that, I think he thought since he hit that three, like, oh, I can make threes, so he shot four more and didn't hit any of them. So, you know, I got I got that little problem. But at yeah. least he put up 15. I mean, some of these dudes didn't give you anything. You know, one shot, heat check. I love it. Devin Chencho was like one for six. Connaughton didn't do anything. George Hill had a relatively decent game. But there's so many dudes. Milwaukee has so much depth, so much quality depth. And then you just – you look at the totality of what they've done, and it's just – you're just unimpressed. They are – they were off – as much as I say Orlando, I don't think Orlando can play any better than they played today. Milwaukee, I don't think they could play any worse. They were not good in any facet of this game. Defensively, I've talked about this. You got to pick something that you're going to take away on defense. Milwaukee traditionally, especially throughout this season, they have chosen to protect the paint. And they say, well, we're going we're gonna to concede. There's going to be open perimeter shots. Uh, but we're going to protect the paint. Well, they're not protecting the paint, and they're still giving up three. So they're not guarding anything right now. They're giving up, I mean, just straight line drives to the basket. Guys are getting free on these little simple cut plays and just getting behind Brooke Lopez and just laying the ball up. And just a simple thing. If you can't, if you cannot stay between your man and the rim, you're going to have problems. And immediately, immediately, they, whatever perimeter defender it is, they get beat off the dribble and they're immediately put into a disadvantage rotating. And that's just happened time and time again today. And then offensively in the half court, I, 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 that's not Mike Budenholzer offense. I don't know what they're running right now, but this whole thing where we just we just either give the ball to Giannis or we give the ball to Middleton and say, all right, well, y'all just do something. I mean, wh- when did they become the Houston Rockets? I don't understand it. This th- th- Mike Budenholzer offenses, you can go back to his days with Atlanta, go back to the Spurs when, when he was an assistant with the Spurs. Ball movement, ball movement, ball movement. I don't see it. I just see one dude out there with the ball playing one-on-one or in Giannis's case, one-on-five. And then whatever you get, it's not good. And then they don't, they also don't seem to be protecting the basketball. So they're getting beat in transition over and over before they can even set up a defense, which they're not playing right now. So there's, there's a whole lot of things that are not good right now with the Milwaukee Bucks and they got to get together real quick. Um, You can't, you can't have another performance like this. You have to come out focused in game two. You can't tell me you're all of a sudden just not good and, and Orlando is all of a sudden a better team with lesser personnel somehow. You're not going to be able to tell me that. Um, and, again, I don't expect this to continue. I don't know what Mike Budenholzer could say to these dudes, but he got to have something in store from them. And then also, I get it. There's no crowd noise. It's a bubble. It's a weird environment. But, I mean, I, I, y'all would have – the Bucks were the best team in basketball this year, wire to wire, up until um, when the league shut down in March. What what has changed? That the same players. I don't understand it. They got to fix it. Go ahead, drink. <clears throat> oh my bad. My bad. I was doing my best Bucks impersonation because I had to take a quick nap. Here's the deal. Um, that was that was my first takeaway. Was that, that I don't know what what the Bucks was doing. You know, I don't. Uh, Giannis, Giannis, you, you you see your boy over here, Giannis, Giannis. Could you please tell me what the you was doing? Cause you yo you wilding, b. You wilding. You gotta get your boys. You got to get them back in action, all right? Uh, I don't know what that was about, but I do agree with Jay. That's an anomaly. I don't think we see that continuously. I hope not because that's a pretty long sleep. My second takeaway is um, the Utah Jazz. Um, Utah, for you, you will be delivering, not DiGiorno's. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what 
what what else we can do? I know you uh, know um, later we'll talk about you getting a piece back, but listen, this is what you are, Utah. You take out. You take out. Uh, we, we don't even give you enough credit to cook you. We order you, we take you out. That's what you that's what you get, Utah. Here's the deal. You come out, you get the best punch you can give, and you still take the L. Utah. You 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 gave it your all. And it was uh, you sound like Charles Barkley in the last dance documentary. Yeah, I, that was the day I realized it was a player better than me. I just gave him my all, he was just better. Yo, know, <laughs> that's what Utah sound like right there. What are we doing here? You sound like the Charles Barkley special, baby. All right, Utah. That, they're a waste of ESPN slash TNT out time right now. That was the that was my second takeaway. And Milwaukee out here sleeping, trying to um give us a new season of The Walking Dead. That ain't gonna cut it. That ain't gonna cut it either, Milwaukee. Like, what are you doing here? What are you doing? And yeah, I know Orlando got a reputation of this. This sorry ass Orlando team. I don't want to hear nothing about that. Nothing. This game shit. This series should be a sweep of Ruski with the Hoover. That's what it should be. Hoover vacuum, that is. Sorry. Should have said vacuum. But either way, this is ridiculous. So, uh, you know, not to keep it too long, but, you know, Jay hit him. He hit him pretty nice. I just wanted to make sure I took old number two on Utah and Milwaukee for their performances uh, up to this point thus far. Over to you, Cody. I have, a, I have a question. Did you have that takeout menu, like, on hand, like, in the car just now? Or, like, was that yeah, – tell yeah, me about it, that. I had it in the car. I had, I, okay. Well, so, so, yeah, I had it in the car, and then I thought about it. I looked at it, and I said, what could I compare to that takeout menu? The Utah Jazz. <laughs> there we go. There All we right. go. All right. And in his so, car, and he's got props. That's that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. I love it. Uh, yeah, I, I want to start off by highlighting uh, outside of the games themselves. Can we take a second to appreciate how good some of this young talent in the NBA really is? Like some of the young stars we have in this league, man. Donovan Mitchell dropped 57 points last night. The youngest player to do that since Michael Jordan in 1986. Doncic's 42 in his first playoff game ever, an NBA record for anyone's first uh, playoff game, period. And only Tracy McGrady, LeBron James, and Magic Johnson have scored 40-plus in a playoff game at age 21. So when you add in the outstanding performances by Jamal Murray and Jason Tatum, this is the first time that four players under 25 have scored at least 30 in one day in the playoffs. So outside of the games themselves and the matchups, this league, man, this is some really good hands going forward. you got to like it if you're, you're a fan of what's to come. That's uh, a fact. These older heads kind of roll out. It's pretty incredible. These guys are just getting started. But, yeah, I mean, a couple quick thoughts in each game. Um, Jay pretty much tore up the Bucks like they deserve. Um, I don't know what that game I just saw was. Um, but, yeah, again, it highlights the one issue that Milwaukee really has is, is Chris Middleton is a shaky second option. And if he starts having problems, you're going to have to get one of those third or fourth guys like Brooke Lopez to really step up. Sometimes they do, but they don't always do so. And, and man, four for 12, that's not going to – 14, that's not going to cut it. I mean, that's just – you you – you were not paid like that, nor should you perform like that. And I mean, Giannis, you know, he did his thing, but no one else really decided they wanted to play. And I mean, I mean, Orlando is not a horrible team. They are a playoff team. Vucevic is a star. The Markeel Fultz reclamation is looking better every day, at least. Uh, Terrence Ross is a six man that most teams would like to have around, but uh, they're still the eight seed. They're still 33 and 40. Like you, this shouldn't be an issue. So, I mean, again, we'll see because last year, I mean, Milwaukee slept through the start of the series. Orlando won their first game, but without Aaron Gordon or Jonathan Isaac, that is embarrassing. Like you, well, may, th- you, you absolutely right. And would you like to take that. a guess at who started in their places? Could I interest you in James Ennis and Gary Clark? Who the hell are they? Come on, man. I've heard of Gary don't, Clark be letting, before, don't be letting Milwaukee oh, no. off the hook. Inexcusable, oh, man. Let me, I'm not let me letting Google them off this. the hook. Let me Google this. <laughs> let me Google this. Oh, no. uh, yeah, you know, moving on, uh, I would say, you know, Nuggets, Jazz, uh, this is why I thought this game, this series is going to be a sweet, man. I mean, J- Jazz just gave them the best two punches they had in their last two games. I mean, three overtime periods. Denver won both games. Utah in the first game, they, they had 35 from Mitchell, and they had 19-plus from Clarkson, Gobert, Conley, and they shot 40% as a team from three. They made 22 threes. And then this game, you get almost 60 from Mitchell. You get still good nights from Clarkson, Gobert, and Ingles, and it's still not enough. I mean, the Jazz, they have three or four options. The Nuggets just have more, and they have more answers. I I mean, yeah, I mean, the Nuggets probably aren't going to shoot 53% from three like they did in the game one. But, I mean, so I guess if that doesn't happen and Mitchell gives you 60 more, maybe you might win a game. But, I mean, other than 
the only thing I have concern for with the Nuggets is, is there any defensive strategy change against Mitchell? I mean, Torrey Craig got destroyed. So do you put Jeremy Grant maybe on him more? Do you start like playing more team defense and just double teaming him, trapping him, et cetera. But other than that, man, I I don't, I mean, if Mitchell plays like that every game, they're going to win one, but Oh, nah, I, I, that, that series in a sweep still. Yeah, and the Raptors, only thing I'll say about that game, I, I had little expectation for the Nets after that great game against Portland, but I see that was completely misplaced. Raptors, other than Van Vliet, didn't even play all that well, and they just – the only reason this game was even 24 points was the Raptors took a quarter off. It probably would have been 30 or 40. So, yeah, I, that's a sweep. I mean, we got a couple I, – I think with this playoff format, you might see a couple sweeps more than we're used to seeing. It could be – some of these series, they could get kind of ugly. We'll see.